and gentlemen bass players around the world uh, Detroit bass players California bass players uh, Detroit bass players welcome to the basement there's B-A-S-S-M-I-N-T and we have with us a special guest in the basement tell us your name sir what's your name sir Tony Newton. Tony Newton. <laughs> now, for folks that don't know, we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, this man has been um, offering to come to the basement for the last seven years. <laughs> we got patience around here, folks. Right, right. It's a seven, seven years, and um. Allowing us to do an interview with him here in the basement, but before we get to that, we're going to talk to, we're going to uh, introduce the rest of the panel here, and to my front hand side, tell us your name, Marvin Sheets, <laughs> and next to Marvin, let's tell us your name. Uh, so. William Pope, Pope Star, Pope Delicious, Pope Tastic, uh, all them popes. <laughs> right, <I call. laughs> Grand Pope. Oh yeah. <laughs> Now Marvin, it appears as though you're not a bass player, it appears as though you're a guitar player. Yes, sir. And um, you even do some similar stuff as like we do, like we go take a bass photo, you put together uh, the guitar player's photo right. for Detroit guitar players, yes, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One day, man, you got to come in here and let us interview you as well. We, we don't uh, hate guitar players we we have to play with we got to play with you you know what i'm saying and we have a certain relationship that we can discuss you know what i mean absolutely now on my plug hand side tell us your name sir my name is tomas lopez i play guitar too uh oh yeah we got a couple of, where's your guitar at, man uh, i didn't bring it i just thought it was going to be interview basically uh, okay cool yeah uh, next time, bring it. Okay. We we can compare stuff, you know. And then, um, and, uh, uh, yeah, tell us your name, sir. Reginald Canty. <laughs> Reginald Canty, the owner and host of the basement. Thank yeah, you for letting yeah, us yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and, and I'm big eyed, uh, because mm -hmm. I always forget to say who I am. Right. Okay, so. Yeah, you can go and turn that down because I'm about to learn something right now <laughs> for a second. Now, um, Mr. Newton, my first question that I always like to ask everybody, and and I got to do it for you as well. Uh, when did you start playing the bass and why? 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 <laughs> um, what happened, I was playing saxophone. Uh, I, pl I was playing woodwinds all throughout uh, school and high school and from elementary. I played all the woodwinds and then went to saxophone. And um, in those days, it was mostly upright. Uh, that was uh, the main thing. 
but the electric bass came on the scene the early 60s it became very popular right. and I played in a couple of bands now uh, the black bands I played in was like David Ruffin and Melvin Davis we had two guitar players and one of them was supposed to be the bass player right but it was actually two guitars and so then I played with a, a white rock group and uh, I can't think of the name of the group but they couldn't have me in the band for too long because the clubs didn't want any black guys in the club, right, in the band. Uh, and so, but the bass player loaned me his bass because I had started hearing, the, you know, this tremendous sound on these records because we're talking about the recording record boom that's in the 60s that's mm -hmm. going on, right? And so, of course, there's a lot of uh, upright on, on these recordings, uh, but there's also a lot of electric bass that's going on. But this is the first time I had, had heard of the instrument. So, um, so we did a gig in, in uh, uh, what's it, Mac, uh, Mackinac, upstate, New, uh, upstate Michigan. We had the, the gig in the winter. And so I had asked the bass player uh, that I could borrow his bass. So uh, I was playing saxophone on the gig, but it was still just two guitars playing. One was playing bass parts, another playing guitar parts. So, and I was playing saxophone. So um, what struck me about the instrument that it had the power to touch somebody's spirit and their soul. It had you know, it could control the music, it controlled the band, it was the foundation, and uh, I like that. <laughs> I like that, 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 that impetus of uh, having that kind of power. Because I didn't have that kind of power with the saxophone. I was first share of saxophone, and it was, it was fine and all of that. I play Coltrane and Cannonball and all of that. But that was a different kind of thing, whereas the bass you know, you'd feel it here, mm -hmm. right? And you'd be driving the band. And so uh, I like that, the energy of that. And so uh, I knew that that was you know, my main calling, was to play bass. And how how old, old were you when you really started playing the bass? 14. 14 years old, that, that, that is important. Uh, <clears throat> 14. Um, you say you used to play with David Ruffin and them before? Uh, yeah, well, what happened was uh, after, I, I, yeah, I was playing with them uh, and we had a group called the Jaywalkers and so uh, <laughs> I started playing bass with them but then when we got home uh, back to Detroit there was a lot of blues gigs because there was a lot of blues artists coming from Chicago, John Lee, T-Bone, Lil Walter, uh, Jimmy Reed, uh, even around here, Bobcat Bob and shit like that. And so I, uh, I cut some hair off my head and glued it on my lip so I could get in the club <laughs> and make that money, right? Mm -hmm. And so I started playing uh, the, the blues, right? And so um, they wasn't paying the five dollars a night and shit like that. But I wanted to play, I didn't care, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's how I, I got started, and uh, it, it, I started. It, you know, I was still playing saxophone, and uh, there was a high school band, uh, Mount Royal Clefs, right? And we opened up for Nina Simone, but I was still playing saxophone then. The plan, you know, thing for Connie Bob in Detroit was. Musically, it was happening all over Flame Show Bar, Tony Grand. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was damn near a studio yeah. on every corner. So, uh, every if, we, if we can put a, a timeline on this, is this is this 61, okay. 62? Yeah, yeah, so let's say 62 to 64, because when I got with Motown, it was 64. They found me playing with uh, Johnny Hooker in the club, uh, Hank Cosby. Um, he was the A&R person at Motown. And I had been hearing about Motown, you know, there was, the buzz was going around town. Uh, they were looking for people and stuff like that. And um, 
I didn't even know he had heard me, so he he he, he uh, came to one of the clubs and heard me, and then uh, he told Smokey and them about it. next thing I know, next door, I mean next day, Ronnie White from the Miracles was knocking on my door, and they wanted me to replace Jameson, um, because Jameson was touring with the Miracles, with Smokey and the Miracles, and Motown, they wanted him to stay in the studio, so uh, I got the gig because I could read. Uh, mm. You all hear that, bass players? <laughs> <laughs> Some of my best gigs, I played Aretha, I played Carnegie Hall with Aretha, because I could read. Wow. <laughs> I played all the Han Dozier stuff, Baby Love, all of this kind of stuff, because I could read yeah. and play. So. You know, don't ignore music theory. Uh, you know, you're just hurting yourself <laughs> very badly, really, because once you learn music theory, uh, which I had learned, you know, from playing classical music, but I, I consider myself street trained and school trained. The best of both worlds. Now, now, right. I, now before we get to, to some of that controversial stuff like yeah. music theory, that could totally ruin your uh, yeah, right. ability to play. <laughs> ability to play right. <laughs> Before we get to that, I, I want to just stay here. The 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 youth the the youthful thing, the history thing, is what I'm, I'm that mesmerized me about you. And and um, uh -huh. and I finally get to ask these questions. It's like, so you played with all these blues greats when you were like 14 years 14 old. 14 and 15, right? So you you already a pro professional musician at this yeah. age, and then Motown and them call you, and and, and now you uh, are you at the studio or or no I'm a road musician what? initially right I'm so, Smokey's road musician and so I'm touring with Smokey but then for the Motown review they still again they wanted Jameson to stay in the studio mm -hmm. but I'm the person that's got the closest sound to him and I can read mm -hmm. and play like him. In those days I wanted to play just exactly like Everybody him. Did. I had him come into yeah. my own, yeah. right? And so, um, uh, that's why they wanted me. So therefore, I played on with all of the Motown acts on the Motown Review in, in Europe. Okay, so now back then, um, if I have my facts correct, or, or my foggy facts correct, <laughs> <laughs> People like the Temptations and um, and uh, Diana Ross and the Supremes yeah. and um, um, Stevie, little Stevie Wonder, they were like opening acts, right? Back no, then. No, they they created uh, shows around those acts. Oh, well, who, right, like a Motown review or who were the closers back in the, in six? You went on the UK. Motown review. I was all Motown in, in '65, right? Yeah, uh huh. And in '65, you in the UK. UK stands for United Kingdom. Yeah. You want to know who closed the show? Who, who was the closers back then? Smokey and the Miracles. Smokey Robinson and yeah, the Miracles. Yeah. So we had, uh, I think, Vandellas opened up, uh, Supremes, uh, Stevie. See, that's what I'm saying. Those were openers back. Then, before they became oh, yeah, huge, right, before right, they became major. the closers, right, right, you know what I'm right, saying? Yeah, exactly. And, and um, and, and I'm just just uh, giddy over you being 16 years old mm -hmm. with a passport. Uh, right. <laughs> right. Well, I was giddy too because I asked him, I said, "Ain't I too young to be going out the country?" He said, "No, we'll take care of it." <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and, and, and that had to be a. a uh, maybe scary, but it had to be a blast once once you started playing, right? Oh yeah, well, uh, it, it, for me, I, I always I rise to the challenge. That's the only thing I know about. <laughs> it's rising to the challenge. So I don't let no fear get in there. I just do what I got to do to make sure that I'm gonna do the job right. So I do my homework, and uh, you know, so that I can feel confident that. Uh, I can do it, therefore I can have a good time and just play the stuff because that's what they're looking for. They want me, they don't want me to come in there just reading damn notes. They want me to play the shit and bring some life and energy mm -hmm. to it, it. For, for each act, that's right? It. And so um, you have to be at a certain uh, mental level and a certain uh, 
I'll say consciousness mm -hmm. without getting too metaphysical about it, but it is a way of thinking because some guys just play like this mm -hmm. all the time. They don't know about the ups and downs. And most especially all your bass players learn about on the beat, behind the beat, and ahead of right. the beat. Because every artist is in a different place. And you got this whole world in there. It's not just one place. And so uh, that was, you know, some of the most important things that I learned. As, as well as I was always playing with older cats, right? And they were like the Funk Brothers. And they'd tell me when I was, you know, doing something wrong. And I learned from them. And, and that was a blessing to be able to, uh, for a young guy to be able to play with the older yeah. cats. Because that's who you're yeah. going to learn from, mm -hmm. right? I, I, like, I've got a guitar player in, in L.A. And I, I've tried him, and, and, and I've used him on a gig uh, lately. I said, well, I can tell you've been, you've been playing with guys that ain't up to par. Because <laughs> he hadn't grown in a couple mm -hmm. of years, right? Yeah. I hadn't heard him in a couple of years. I was like, who have you been playing with? I mean, shit. You, you know, you got to yeah. start playing with guys that's better than you. Yeah, 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 so that you can grow. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so that's, that's, that's one of the keys, right, is playing with people that are better than you. And for you to have a vision um, and de devotion and dedication and passion enough to want to be good on your instrument. Okay, and, okay, all right. Great, not good. Right. Okay. Good ain't good enough. Okay, you, you leave in the 60s, and I, I'm still okay. in the 60s, brother. Right. Okay, Because, see, this is the time where uh, I was born. You know, I was, yeah. bo I was born in 61. I don't know. Oh, okay. Right. I don't know nothing about 61. Right. I don't know nothing about 62. Okay. I, That's when I, the electric bass started appearing on record. Right. Okay. I, now I could probably start recalling stuff from '65 on up, just yeah, right. listening to right. Yeah. Right. my parents, my teenage parents, yes. who who putting everything on the radio. And, uh, mine too, mine too. That's my mother used to play like Little Richard and Elvis and all this stuff and yeah. Ray and I had a clock radio, right? So <laughs> I'd wake up to this stuff and uh, that got me from day one. Okay, so um, again, when you when you first started playing, who were in, influences? Uh, 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 I don't know if you if we knew people's names back then who played bass, but yes. did you know? Did yeah. you have influences and yeah. idols? Or My what? main influences were uh, James Jamerson, uh, Chuck Rainey, and Dick Chuck Dunn. Rainey. Because yeah. we used to hear like Wolfman Jackie's playing all the stuff mm -hmm. from down south, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Chuck is playing all the stuff in the New York area and everywhere else. And Jamerson is playing all the stuff, uh, you know, from here in Chicago and, and uh, surrounding areas, right? And you know, they was kicking ass, that's all I can say so, when it comes to the instrument, right? Right, so uh, uh, as as time uh, started ticking on, a lot of people weren't familiar with the uh, behind the scenes of Motown because they right. didn't put uh, the no, bass players right, and all that kind right, of stuff. But right. you, Took you all, 30 years. Right, but you always knew. <laughs> you, you always knew who they were. Yeah. The Jamesons right, and... Right, and right. Uh, and the Babbitts and, and the... Yes, and exactly. The and well, Jameson and Babbitt, they, they have Detroit locked up, uh, but I was more interested in Jameson. Right, and um, eventually, uh, y'all had to, you came back home from the UK, right? Yes. Did you ever go back again as a uh, Motown bass no, player? Uh, no, we didn't do any more tours. Uh, that's when I started playing, uh, okay, for all the people that don't know, there's two bases on Baby Love, Where'd I Love Go, Stop in the Name of Love, Nowhere to Run, and it's Jameson and I, because the Holland, Holland Doja Holland, they wanted to use three guitars and, and two basses. So these were, that was my first experience with the Funk Brothers, second experience, I mean, I played with the Funk Brothers live during the tour, and then I started working with them in the studio. And then Jameson, me and Jameson, uh, we always were close because I used to go see him play at, at the clubs. And um, as time went on, we got closer and even visited my house 
and uh, you know come by and stuff like that. Okay, now um, thank you. I got that out of my system. The 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 sixties, the Motown <laughs> Review, and, and, and all of the different people that you play with. You you kind of glaze over because you did it, but. I didn't do it, so I just wanted you to stay there in the no, moment, you, you know what I'm saying? Well, there, there's more to it, right? Say, for example, I played on uh, What You See Is What You Get, uh, and that was from United Sound. Right, there are right, some right. Johnny Taylor and all of that. That's not Motown, right? Because there's tons of studios all over the place. You could be playing, you know, three or four sessions a day. There was, I don't know if you all remember, you probably don't, but there was a guy, I don't remember the label, his name was Mike Hanks, but he didn't pay people so he didn't last long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> so uh, there's Popcorn Wiley. Um, there was all kinds of uh, sessions going on. Uh, you know, I've been around since, you know, we've recorded the whole orchestra, everybody at the same time, two track. It went the four track and eight track, sixteen and twenty four, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, during the sixties, like I said, the record boom was happening in the sixties. That's when we radio. Let's let's put it that way. Recording records and radio was the boom in the sixties, and definitely every black family mm -hmm. had a radio in, in the house right. listening to music That's blasting on 24 yes, 7 yes, right sir. and so um it, it was uh, you know it's a very exciting time musically if you are musically inclined because there was all kinds of unique music that was coming out people did what they wanted it didn't matter whether it was black or white it was it was it was interesting Passionate, creative music. Okay, so you you play with a uh, a ton of people. Have, have you ever had to just write it down and say say, say who I've played with? And, and mostly when we mention people who I've played with, mostly we 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 mention the celebrity person, not all of the band members that come and go and right, back and right, forth. Right. You ever write down a list of just like? Everybody that you play with, uh, it, it's on my resume because uh, I don't think about it, right? Because there, there's been so many from, like I say, John Lee Hooker to the Mamas and Papas, Little Richard. Because there, there was sessions here in um, uh, Detroit, and then when I moved to California, that opened up a whole nother world because it was more culturally open and more musically open. So you had uh, more opportunities to play with different artists uh, in California, or different types of artists. So, right? so why did you move, though? Well... For that reason? Oh, well, uh, no. Uh, yeah, yes and no. Uh, okay, we've got a little period here that, that we're missing. So, when... Uh, so we got Motown up to let's say the 60s then uh and let me add this if you want to see footage of uh the uh motown review with tony newton on bass they, that they actually have some uh yeah. stuff on youtube right yeah it's on youtube uh it's r s g uh, it's dusty spring for feel ready steady go it's it's on my facebook page as well and uh, they have some clips of me playing with with everyone. Okay. Uh, that Motown reveal, right? All right. So we're back to where where you were. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just so uh, because I, I I toured with everybody, uh, right? I was even their music director at the Apollo, like if the Vandellas or Martha or Mary Wells or, or, or whoever when I went to the Apollo, uh, because I was Smokey's music director. It was cheaper for them to hire me, right, because I was already there to become their music director. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving right along, then there was this big split between Holland Dozier and Motown, and they formed Invictus Hot Wax uh, Records. So I was their main bassist over there, so I played on damn near everything that came out of there, Honeycomb, Hundred Proof, um, General Johnson, Frida Payne, all of these people, right? 
So, and they gave me a chance to start my own group, which was the eighth day. Uh, but they weren't very good at managing uh, and, and taking care of business. And so, um, uh, so the group didn't last long. We did two albums, and I had eight people out and stand at my house. And so, and we did the best we could. And uh, after that kind of, uh, you know, uh, went to the wayside, then I started doing other groups, uh, more rockish groups, uh, like Newton's North Star and stuff like that, and um, five-piece groups. And so we, we did a lot of that, and, uh, but I still wasn't making enough money. And so uh, not the kind of money I was making with Motown and doing all of the sessions. Sessions were coming, you know, pretty fast, but then they started waning um, when disco came along, let's mm -hmm. say, right, yeah. at 70. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so I, I did the eighth day, and, and <coughs> we're talking about early 70s now, so around 74, 75, I'm thinking, because when I was with Smokey, we'd go to California at least two times a year. And so I had connections in California. I liked the women there. I liked the weather. I liked the whole situation there. And so, and I had connections. So I said, well, I'm going to give California a shot. And so that's what I did. So I moved from Detroit uh, to California. And I don't regret that move at all because um, I played on lots of other stuff. Um, I got re-educated, I went back to school, got my degrees and stuff in awesome. music and all of that. Awesome. And it's been, uh, you know, quite an experience for me in California. Yeah, and then, <clears throat> so, uh, normally when somebody that comes in the basin and they play with a lot of people, I have a little scroll go past right there with all uh -huh. these names, so uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that too. Okay. But let's, uh, cause, yeah, because I can you'll... send you uh, my press kit and they'll have all of that. I, I already got your press kit. Oh, okay, okay, good. You know, I, I got all the <laughs> right, <of, right>. seven <laughs> years. You the, you the real deal. He keep up with you. <laughs> right. seven, seven years ago, I met this man. I, I don't even remember how. It yeah, had, right. It had to be from the the internet. Thank you, internet. <laughs> right. The, or interweb. The, right. the, the, inter, the internet is something else, man. It's yeah. a, a lot of library. bad. Yeah. It's a lot of bad stuff going on there, but right. Right. a lot of great yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I, exactly. And um and and I reached out to the man. I was like, look, man, I got this show called uh, Detroit Bass Players in the Basement. People keep bringing your name up. I don't even know who you is. Right. Right. Uh. <laughs> Uh, I did a lot of work at Motown, but I'm most known for my work uh, with playing Jazz Rock Fusion with the Tony Williams Lifetime. Which is crazy to me. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's insane. Right. That's yeah. right. That's right. insane. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why you go to Fusion, man? Okay. <laughs> well, first of all, I didn't know I was getting into it, right? So I'm, I'm in California, right? And so I'm doing sessions, but I'm not just a studio musician. I'm, I'm an artist too. So I call back here and I, I call uh, Michael Henderson, mm. uh, who I, I hear got the information from Ralph Armstrong because he was playing with my Vishnu, John McLaughlin and my Vishnu. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh yeah, well, Tony's been, they've tried 40 different cats and haven't found anybody. So uh, there's a couple of things in here you guys, you need to know. And so, uh, the first is Jocko tried out for the gig and Jeff Berlin tried for the gig. They did not fucking get the gig because they couldn't hold it down. They know how to play a lot of notes, but they couldn't play bass, right? And so I see a lot of guys who are playing a bunch of notes these days, but they don't know how to play bass, they don't know how to lay a, a, a foundation. So. Tony calls me and I put together some snippets of, you know, records I played on. They flew me in and we played and the rest is history as they say, right? Okay, <laughs> okay so I'd just yeah. like to uh, uh, go over some things. Uh, 
not to sound braggadocious and stuff, but two of the bass players you mentioned. Michael and Ralph. Michael Henderson, a Detroit bass player. Yeah, exactly. Detroit has a sound that's nowhere else. Ralph. Ralph uh, Armstrong, okay, yeah. another Detroit yeah, bass player. Right, right. Uh, and, and they took gigs from other people that, that right. just couldn't hold the, uh, right. uh, something in that right. Detroit River water we drink or something. <laughs> well, we know how to play bass. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> right? We do have a regional sound. You don't discover yes. you leave here. Yes, and, and Jameson is the key, right? He's the foundation. That's where it all came from. Uh, however, we have our own each have our own way of expressing that through our instrument, right? Yeah. But that, that's the foundation. And because um, Jameson laid the pocket down, he laid the groove down like no other, really. Uh, I mean, there's, you know, uh, Chuck and, and, and Dick Dunn, they knew how to do it too. Because they, these people are playing on records, lots of records mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's what's necessary to be able to play okay. on a recording. There's two things, two or three things you have to be able to do. You have to bring something to the table. You have to be able to read, and then you have to play what's right for that artist, right. that particular artist. So that means you can't think the same way you've been thinking. You have to think, okay, what's good for this artist? Mm -hmm. And everybody can't do that. They don't know how to think. They don't know how to create in that way because they're stuck in a one-dimensional mm -hmm. thinking pattern, right? And so that's what I've always been open. I mean, that's why I played classical music and I played regular music and then played saxophone. So for me, music is food, right? I like it all, right? So when it came to the fusion, because I remember sitting the first night, it was... I got to New York, it was Tony, Ron Carter, and somebody. Another, De Billy Hart in, in another New Detroit York. bass player by Ron Carter. Ron Carter. Yeah, yeah. Right, another, man. another one, right, yeah. exactly. So they're playing at the Village Vanguard or something. And I say, are we going to be playing this? I'm sitting at the bar with Holdsworth. I say, so I asked Tony on the bar. I said, are we going to be playing this? He said, oh, no, we're not going to be playing that. Because they were playing straight ahead, jazz, yeah, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we got to rehearsal the next day, we just jammed, right? And so we just played, and it was a full-out situation, right? Full mm -hmm. creativity, full-out, full volume, full everything, mm -hmm. right? And we explored, <laughs> let's put it that way. Wow. We just explored wow. playing with ourselves and, and the chemistry between ourselves, right? Because you can't forget chemistry, guys. Right. Right. <laughs> you can't. You can. <laughs> there ain't no music without chemistry. Right. You can not be in your head talking, oh, yeah, I'm bad if I'm playing this shit. Uh, no, it's mm -hmm. a team. Right. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's about yeah. the chemistry that mm -hmm. each one of us bring to yeah. each other to make that magic yeah. happen, Absolutely. right? It's the same shit on recordings, any recording. And that's why that music is timeless. Mm. Any timeless music has captured the essence, that magic, uh, you know, on mm -hmm. whatever, right? Yeah, it's man. digital yeah. or analog, right? Mm -hmm. well, that's what you want to Yeah, that's, that's awesome, man. <laughs> um, I hear your passion when it comes to the educational side of it's like you trying to tell people learn learn it you know right. you have a passion for uh it appears to me that you have a passion for wanting others to learn yes i do their their yeah. instrument right. right i want to share that at, at the path of learning let's let's put it that way because a lot of people take different paths like like you said, some people think learning theory is going to hurt their playing. When has education ever hurt anybody? Yeah, I know that's right. <laughs> Just put it in those terms, yeah. right? right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, there are people born with talent. That's cool. But if, if you're trained and you're developing that talent, then you're going to be even better. And let's say something again. Behind every great person, I don't give a damn what they're doing, a music or artist or what architect, if, if they are great, they learn from somebody great. Mm -hmm. they, they learn from a great teacher, 
So that's the key is you learn from others yes, that are great and they pass down information to you and you pass it on and you use this information and uh, hopefully they can treat it like the treasure and diamond that it really is. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you personally teach? Yes, I, I teach, yes. I, I teach uh, bass, uh, piano, composition theory, and uh, you know, I've invented a harmony system, quintal and quarter harmony of fifths and fourths. I teach oh, that. Okay. Uh, I teach vocals, um, songwriting, you know, all of that. Okay, so you said I... Meditation. <laughs> you you <laughs> said you invented the harmony system? A harmony system called Nova Phonics, yes. Uh, uh, is that available to the public? Uh, yes and no. There are some, uh, I've created this Divine Wholeness Meditation which uses Nova Phonics. And uh, Nova Phonics is the underpinning uh, of uh, uh, the meditation, right? It's the music. Okay, let me explain it to you this one. Traditional harmony uses one threes and sevens and this kind of stuff. Uh, quintal and quartal, which means fourths and fifths, just like uh, each one of these sounds has what, it, internally what's called the overtone series, and that's harmonics. And so the first harmonic is an octave, then it's a fifth and a fourth, then the third start. So the most powerful intervals, just like a power chord on the guitar, it's, it's, it's playing the root and the fifth, mm -hmm. right, and the octave, but, right. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I find 15,000 new chords of fifths and fourths and what happens is after the third fifth all the overtone synchronizes so it, it gives a, a real beautiful resonance and rich uh, harmonic sonic quality right wow. so i've been experimenting and writing uh, i've written over 200 pieces including my seven movement symphony uh using these uh harmonies and these chords mm -hmm. right and so it's available you can you can buy Nova Fonics and Universal Harmony, which is uh, a, a small book for anybody. Uh, I've written seven volumes on the topic, but this one you can get at Amazon. It, it's cheap, 20 bucks. Talks about how I discovered it and the evolution of it throughout history. Because Beethoven was writing in fifths on his deathbed, and there's been certain composers throughout history that I've tapped into it, but they didn't explore all the colors like I did. I put in the most homework. Okay. Now, <clears throat> for those... And it's not outside. That's, that's, that's the first thing you guys should understand. It's not like... Uh, 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 it's nothing like that. Okay. For those who, <laughs> who just heard another language and didn't understand what he was talking about, especially when he mentioned numbers, when he says ones and threes and fives and sevens, he didn't go as far as 9s and 11s and 13s. No, because this goes to 48s. <laughs> it starts around, it goes to, like a 6 tone quintal chord is a, a 21. <laughs> right. Now speaking of There's lessons right and there. stuff, here's a student of mine who didn't get the message not to come. that we're not having a <laughs> lesson today. All right. Uh, but they're doing that in uh, fifths. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so, so in, in other words, what I want people right now before it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's let's talk about that. The eight. Right. What, what when you mention those numbers, what are they pertain, pertaining to? They pertain to intervals, right? Like from one, they steps from one note to the other. Like if you, if you go. Uh, you got your root note, whatever your dominant first note is, and so if you go a whole step, that's a, a whole one, right? Now you can go a half step, which is half, right? So you can go one, one and a half, two, two and a half, right? If, if you want to think of it, because it is all fucking mathematics. That but you don't hear no damn mathematics. That's a fact. <laughs> right? Uh, music is, is man, right. I, I mean, if we had time, li literally, <laughs> did, right. look, if you think about it, uh, you probably know this, there's 15 major keys or 15 key signatures. <laughs> yeah, right. For every letter, here's the mathematics, there's a key called the key of A. Mm -hmm. The key of A has 
three sharps. Yeah. There's a key called the key of A flat. Uh -huh. The key of A flat right. has four, four flats. Right. Three plus four equals seven. Right. Now, to, to prove my point mathematically, you have a key called B. The uh -huh. key of B has five sharps. Yeah. You have a key called B flat. Right. It has two flats. Right. Five and two so is seven. seven. Right. Mm -hmm. I can do this until I get to uh, right. Exactly. Every you you can come up with all uh, what what is uh, uh, they call infinite diversity, infinite combinations. Right. right. So so it's crazy the mathematics of it, but uh, but it's not expressed that way. Right. 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 It's no, expressed no. in, in a, an emotional way. Right. Even though there's but the whole universe is mathematics, right? Absolutely. We're talking about the laws of physics, totally. right? right? Ultimately, right, if you want to get really deep into it, and you can explore all of this stuff. Just like Coltrane, he got into it, right? Uh, he's one of many that has got into the mathematics because it's an inner dimension uh, of sound once you get into it, sound itself. Yeah, that, that's crazy. Because cause we can go there, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Exactly. Everything is... A sound and like all sounds is vibrations, right? Mm -hmm. Right, and they can be measured. Right. We, we measure them in, uh, yeah, I think, like, we, in the hertz, hertz or something. Yeah, hertz, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But every right. everything, yeah. It, yeah. And, and I'm sure you've heard music through a flat tire going down the street or yeah, uh, yeah anything, yeah, yeah. anything. Sure. Rhythm, right. I hear rhythm. Right. 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 I hear rhythm. Just like a quantum chord is a one five nine. It's not a one three five seven nine. It's just a one five nine, and if you uh, turn it upside down, like you turn a fifth interval to a fourth interval, then it becomes the same thing, only upside down. A fifth chord becomes a quarter chord, a fourth chord. I mean, it's like a whole nother world. Some guys can't handle it, right? right yeah. They're so stuck into the old way of thinking. When I show them the stuff, they just yeah. I, I'm kind of, I'm one of those guys that can't handle it. But, <laughs> no, you but, ain't. but if, I, if I was to sit down and show you, the sound uh, in itself will take you away. You're going to want to, uh, okay, I want to know about know that, about right? That. right. Mm -hmm. As soon as you hear the sound, you say, well, I want to know about it because that's what happened with me. I said, I'm tired of hearing the same old I, damn sound. Hey, right? man, I thought, yeah, we yeah, worked, exactly. I, we'll I, thought I passed on to your pops that we weren't having a lesson today. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. No, I don't apologize. You didn't know, so no apology needed. Sorry about that, that you didn't know. Okay, bye. See you next week. Thank you. That's one of my brightest piano students, oh, man. The, cool. the dude is awesome on the piano. But uh, uh, but I just wanted to, here's another way to phrase this, folks. Let's take a, a, a key. Uh, a key has seven notes. And if you play that key, each note in order, and you, you're playing it as a scale, and you're going to end with the eighth note, which is the same as the first note. So you got so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight notes for every key. All 15 keys have seven notes, but the scale, each note of that key played in order, has an octave on top. So the octave meaning the same note higher or lower, but so when we talk about the one, the five, and the seven, we're actually talking about the degrees of the key. The one, let's say the key of C, C D E C D E F G A B C. <laughs> right. And the key of C, C is the one. Right. E is the three, and G is the yeah, five. It's a five. Right. So, so, and when you put those notes together in harmony, they they sound wonderful. Right. Uh, uh, as a major chord mm -hmm. in the key. And then you can do that with different notes. Each note has its own right. set of uh, it's colors. Yeah, Each that one you has add. A different color. And so he's talking about fourths and fifths. Right. Stacked. Stacked. That is. That's used a lot in jazz. Yeah, not so you much. Hear, you hear McCoy, Tyner, and Keith. Yeah, they, but they play mostly fourths. Right. Uh, fourths. Right. They kill. And and folks have been told stay away from the fourth. Right. Right. Stay oh, away. Stay away from, from the flat five. Stay away from the eleventh. Yeah. Stay away from the eleventh. <laughs> and I was like, no, nah, the no, geniuses. Right. right. They use those. They use all of that. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying. Right. right. So don't stay away from nothing. Learn. Right. Learn, right. Everything. learn everything. All. Learn everything. If if you want to be good, yeah, right. If you want to be good and uh, and talented on your instrument, right. 
Learn as much as you can. Be a sponge. And, 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 and get good at it. And how long does it take to get good, Tony? Well, let's just put it this way. Mediocrity is not going to get you anywhere. <laughs> right. And so, you know, the normal rule is 10,000 hours, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what I did was I sat there in my bedroom and I played the records and I did not leave the damn room until I could play the record note for note along while it's playing. Because mm -hmm. if I can do that, then I can go on beyond that, right? And so, um, I did that, you know, for a few months. Um, it didn't take me, but uh, if you hear from Melvin Davis, it was two weeks. Because, I mean, I understood music. Mm -hmm. It was just a matter of applying the technique to the instrument, right? So it didn't take me as long as it would take the normal person, because I already had musical training. And so, uh, and I know how to apply it, right? So. Uh, I knew about emotional expression through through the uh, saxophone and clarinet and all of that. It's just I had to learn how to express it through the bass instrument. Okay, now, do, what other instruments do you play? Do you play, currently play, you know what I mean? I have a degree in piano, uh, and so piano and composition, and um, I just focus on bass and keyboards these days. I don't play anything else. Uh, you know, I could play drums. I show drummers beats and stuff like that that I want for my compositions and, and things like that. But I don't play drums. Uh, and I'm not... But let's just put it this way. Piano was the first instrument I touched when I was about six years old. There was a neighbor but our parents could not afford a piano. So that's when I started with school. So I did full circle back to the piano and school when I moved to LA because it was free school, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And I took advantage of that. So, and, and so, you know, 30 years later, I came back to the piano and then finished because I wanted to be on the same level as Beethoven or Chopin or anybody else. So I practiced eight hours a day, you know, for a couple of years, and that's how I managed it, right? And so, so you know, I, I, I can play 13 or 14 instruments, but the bass and the... Uh, Piano or keyboards are my focus. Yeah, the piano is a, is a wonderful, wonderful composition instrument. Yeah, it's it's wonderful, but it's it only goes left and right. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right, right. But when there's, the, there's when, a world in there though. When <laughs> when the bass goes left, right, up, uh -huh. down, right, right, right. It's the foundation. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it's the foundation. It's, it plays the drums. Yeah, uh, right. right. It, it's hard to put that down, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But that's what I'm saying, that's what I loved about the instrument, and that's what, you know, got a hold of me, was all yeah. of those elements that you're talking about. Okay, look, now, now a few days ago, like I said, this this has been in the base, uh, this this uh, this basement thing has been in the works for seven years, when I, when I uh, finally got to talk to you, he agreed to do it, we talked on the phone, He's like, yeah, I met so and so, and I, I think I was sick or something. Uh, and um, we finally got to do this thing, and, and I want to thank you for coming. I, I, My honor. I, I'm not going to keep you that much longer, but uh, I want to thank you for coming. And when he got to Detroit, you know, he 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 always keeps in touch with me. You know, they hey, I'm coming. Where the hell? Where the halls at? I'm about to say. <laughs> <laughs> and what I mean by halls is where, where can I do these shows? I right, want to right, share the right, stuff. Right. I'm like, I don't really know, man, but uh, here's somebody that does know. So he, uh, he he came a couple of weeks ago. He said, hey, man, I'm in town. Just want to let you know. And then, um, of course, I found out about the gig that he was doing at the Aretha Cafe. Jazz Cafe at music hall, I want to say that properly, and um, and I got to go see him and hang out with him. I got to go meet a friend that I have never met before, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot of friends that I haven't met, especially in this internet world, and uh, 
and I got to listen to some of that music and stuff uh, during the sound check. Thank you for letting me come out to the sound. Yeah. Thank you for letting me and Reg come out to the yeah. sound check. And and um and I heard some some complicated music and stuff and and, and some regular music too. Right, right. Uh, some blows. Yeah, That's and I was blows. like, I like okay, this dude is a. Uh, now, now I see what's happening, and one of the things I was doing is staring at your fingers. Yeah, cause that's what bass players do. Right. Oh, uh, this is another guy that uh, I really haven't seen him play that much, even though he plays every day uh -huh. down there with everybody. Right, right. And this is this is our Verdine White, cause yeah, right, this right. man, okay. he's okay. always right. moving on that stage. Right. He right. enjoys. Okay. He plays. He's a professional, awesome professional bass player. One of my favorites here. But I was looking at your hands, and right. on, 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 first of all, you have a six string. I noticed the Ibanez yeah. uh, B, B, uh, B, G, G, B. It's Four a six string. Six, yeah. and, and when I'm looking at your plug hand, I noticed that yes. when you're not playing the B string, right. that thumb is locked down. This is on, a Jameson technique. Nobody, it's part of the rake technique, right? And so. Right, uh, so whatever I'm playing, I'm getting to the bottom, right? Right. Right, you don't hear nothing ringing, and I can. Like I said, a lot of guys, they just think it's all here, all, all in this hand, but, but it's not. Hear that? Yeah. Right, that's both hands, right? That's right. Uh, right, it's, it's all in both hands. Now I'm gonna play something, right? I'm just gonna play some simple shit. Okay. Now with your head moving, did, could you feel that beat? Yeah. You don't need to play a bunch of notes. Mm -hmm. Right, you gotta first. gotta be able to express that it's gotta come from in my doctoral thesis healing effects of music say music is a carrier wave of consciousness so my students I will tell them to close their eyes because they'll be blind it's hard for me to do it because it's built in <laughs> right but I tell them okay now <laughs> close your eyes and play it like you care So, uh, you don't need to play a lot of notes, but you got to know, and each one of these notes are precision notes. I'm not playing. You know, something like. Uh, that's one of the most famous lines in life. Yeah. And so, it ain't. Yes. And so that's both hands, right? And you still there's nothing, nothing, you know, this is locked in, like you say, this is locked in. And so I'm not thinking about muting because it's sort of like automatic, but between us. Uh, that's that's both hands working at the same time, right? Right. All 
those are different articulations. <coughs> yeah. But simple things, right? But that's a Jameson, that's another famous Jameson. Right? That's where you're pulling from one string to the other. It's just like a right? That one's a falling off the law. Now you gotta remember Jameson played tuba and he played upright. Mm -hmm. So that's where those techniques come from. Right, so so uh now is some of this you're gonna be going over uh like I said I ain't wanna keep you man. Um you got a you got a sh another sh show Hopefully we get yeah a workshop. Show. Right. And, and where is that workshop gonna be? Oh at? right, the workshop is uh What's the Huber, Huber Breeze? Breeze. Yeah, yeah. Huber Bit, Breeze. Gross back in 13 Mile. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. Gross back in 13 Mile. And we're going to post a lot of it on uh, Facebook. So uh, all the information of what you'll learn, because you, you'll learn this type of uh, technique and, and skill that you can use in any type of music that you play. And so uh, these are techniques that Jameson, what made Jameson famous. And made me famous though, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Because I learned them from him. And they've never, you know, they have never set me in the wrong at any time, right? And so it allows me to freely express and do whatever I need to do at the time. So, so um, folks, y'all need to go check out his workshop if you want to learn something. Um, and before we let you go, we got to. Uh, Oh, look at that. Yeah. That's backward record. Right. <laughs> Everybody figure out their own way to do it, right? Right, right, exactly. Right. I oh. mean, this one, you know, you know, see, you know, see Marcus doing this one, right? I, I was doing it a long time ago. Up and down. Yeah, but you gotta have the string space in right. order to be able to get in there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, you have it's harder or what you other have on a really this hand. Upstroke. Uh, yeah, right. That's exactly. Really right. Upstroke. Well, yeah, on the Ibanez. But still, both hands, yeah. right? The Ibanez strings on the six strings, they, they're very close together. They're close together. But I prefer a wider neck, right, uh, other than this one. But this one sounds good, and I'm dealing with, I have another one that's an Aria Pro that it, it's. Um, it's not P bass spacing, but it, it's better than this spacing. And yeah. I can get in there quick. And, and that, but those, nothing wrong with that spacing because that no. makes for a faster, right, right, yeah. faster, exactly. uh, more efficient it's for execution. For, yeah, right. for other right. different things. Depends, yeah, right? For you know what you're playing. Because I got questions. I know, I know. So, uh, <laughs> like I said, I didn't want to keep you, uh, and um, but but. Uh, in case anybody else have any questions, we like to, uh, our panel to get started. Yes, I have questions. Okay. Okay. So, um, like on most of the songs that you were playing with different people, were you using the P bass or was it? A, yeah. Or okay. It so was most a of the Motown stuff. Yeah, all the Motown stuff is a P bass. Now, but when you went to the when you went to like California, I then, still played the P bass. I didn't switch. Uh, I tell you when I switched. Um, I got an endorsement from BC Rich, okay. and 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 uh, I started playing the five string because all the Tony Williams stuff is is um, four string, okay. right? But then I started playing a, 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 a BC Rich on a couple of things, and then me and Bernie, who's the owner of BC Rich, we got tight and we started developing these new instruments. So I played. A, that's when I start with the five string. And then I said, well, you know, because basically this is an extended range instrument, mm -hmm. right? You got your low B and your high C. Yeah, see, right. And so you want the low B to be able to rumble them, you know, get down there. Yeah. Upright style, but right, they're specially made. And then the high C is good for soloing, right? So what the, what the J. Now when, now, when you did that, did you decide it would be better to have the round wound string sound on there because 
flat sound good, but yeah, they don't. I, it's not the same. Right. No, I'm like, like with your Tony Williams right, stuff, right, you were right. you were using a little bit I more. I was using the raw sounds. Yeah, that's right. what I thought. And so I was learning all that. Uh, yeah, Didn't know who I, you I, was. I was picking it up. Right, right, right. And so I learned on flat wounds. Right, I learned on flat wounds, and they was up about an inch, just like Jameson's. Right, but then. As everything evolves, yeah, <laughs> right? Everything must change, as they say, mm -hmm. right? And now it's sort of like a piano sound, right? right. And it. so, and I love that, yeah. right, right? Because you get a clearer sound, right? right? Cleaner sound that rings, you get more sustained. And so, um, now I use stainless steel. Okay. Right, I like the stainless steel sound, or nickel. One I was just going to say, because that's how you, I like right, nickel. Right, yeah. right, yeah, exactly. Because of that piano sound. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. Wow. Okay. Any, that's all right. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, you were talking about the chordal harmony. I, uh, I stumbled upon this one day. Uh, I, like, I, used to, I used to use my, my chorus a lot and make a pretty chorus with the six string, but I would rate the harmonics. Right, right. And I was trying to figure out you're raking harmonics in a straight line, what would you call a chord right. made up of stack force? Right, right, right. And I said, well, it it, would it be like a, a, a minor sus chord with a nine on top? Uh, right, right. Or an 11? Uh-huh, right, right. And I said, well, right. how do you figure right. this out? Because I mean, that's divisions of the yeah, string, right? Yeah, you can't right. execute it. It's impossible right. for you to right. execute right. it. Right. But how, is, there, is there like anything that you refer to when you're stacking force and stacking fifth like that to have a, a chord that's relative to like stack force or stack fifths because I couldn't figure it out because you got both ways that you could go but I put I mix them together right I mix them together fourths and fifths but you you can go you can stack fifths 12 of them right, right. and you can stack fourths 12 of them but the idea is to uh, make a system that's like what you're used to, major and minor and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So we got a plus five and a flat five, right. a plus nine and a flat right. nine. Right. But there ain't no threes right. and sixes right. in this and shit, those, right? Those stacks, they, right? Cause they ain't gonna sound the right. same, right? Those and stacks so, here, those stacks they sound right. very like You can think of an A quintal, so like you can think of an A quintal over a C quintal, but it's actually a, a C21 quintal, goes up to the 21st. Oh, yeah, but know. the easy way to think of it is like A yeah. quintal. Because what I did was I put them in, everybody knows about consonants and dissonance. Consonants and stuff that sound. sounds, yeah, stable. stable. And then the, the dissonance is, is unstable. Mm -hmm. So I brought in a passing one that I call transonant. So I divided it up. The, the quantum quarter shit into these three groups uh, because I, I, I'm considering, okay, I'm painting sound with colored sound. And so, I, I see, let's put this, this is philosophical, but it's the truth. Everybody thinks it's got to be black or white. Hell no. There's always, it's, that's called the law of the excluded middle. Hmm. There's always a middle, just like life, right? And so, the transonance is the passing. So we got stable, passing, and unstable. And between those three groups, mm -hmm. you can paint anything you want to do wow. with these cards, mm -hmm. right? Once you understand how to mm -hmm. get them, but it, it ain't no different than studying major, minor, augmented, diminished, ninths, elevens, and thirteenths chords. Right. It's the same thing. You just have to think in the quintal quarto way and apply the same rules, but don't use the same rules, uh, right? And so... Uh, so the quarter uh, harmony, you could make it, it doesn't have to, well, you know, the way it's explained to me, well, I didn't get past it, maybe I just assumed uh -huh. it, that, that that's what you call a, a, a chord that's made up of stacked force. Stacks, yeah. Quarters, uh, quarter, right. quarters don't necessarily have to be stacked force. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, I do, yeah, they do. They can't have no thirds in them. Okay. Right? I mean, you could have maybe a third in between two stacks. Yeah, you okay. know, or something like that, that too, okay. too. But basically, you're thinking in stacks of yeah, four. I'm trying to tell somebody, and I'm trying to relate to them. What kind of harmony would you play against I these wrote, chords? Because they were stacked chordals, and I had a bass note underneath each. No, one. let me tell you this. You don't think about no moods, or modes, or none of that shit. Yeah. Playing 
fifths and fourths. Right. It opens up your whole world. Mm. <laughs> right, when it comes to improvisation, mm -hmm. you ain't been mm -hmm. thinking about it. No, later for some modes and all T's and, and scale, uh, you know, all mm -hmm. that kind of shit. Modes, uh, modes and, and, and minors and, and, and uh, you, you know, all of that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It goes out the window because you can play anything with fifths and fourths, you know. Okay. It's just how much dissonance, yeah, how much right. tension you want. How much tension you want, right? And once you discover how much tension, you how to bring it in there, mm -hmm. right, it's, it, you can do it, you know, it's, it's a hell of a world. It's another dimension of sound, mm -hmm. and, and that's what keeps me locked into it for so many <laughs> years now, right? It's that, I'm still learning them, but I'm still learning about everything. <laughs> now, is, it, is it like like with your songs that you do? Is that kind of how? Well, you red alert. Let's let's say let's say red alert. Right. So fourths. See. Same fourths, same things. Mm -hmm. It's flat five. Then going. Uh, they to call it a uh, reverse. Same thing going down. Right, then we're going down the whole tone. Uh, let me play it here. No, oh, this damn instrument. That's flat five, right? Flat B flat to the E. So, uh, I didn't even realize it then when I was writing the shit, right? <laughs> what it was. And so wow. you just knew you were just playing uh, yes, right, 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 what I was hearing. Right, right, yeah. right at that time. Well, uh, because initially I was writing a book composing at the piano one summer. I was like, well, I'm tired of hearing the same old sounds, same old chords. I know there's got to be some other sounds out there. Yeah. So I meditated on it and then I was led to some used bookstore where this guy Ebenezer Proudhead, he was from Britain, and he had, and he showed the overtone series. Most of the American books only showed the harmonic. Uh, overtones up to the 11th partial, where his went up to the 16th. So I could get a better perspective of what was going on, and that opened the door for me, right? And then I started just, you know, because if you sit down at the piano and play just a stack of fifths, mm -hmm. you'll hear it right away. But you won't be able to do nothing until you move them around, oh. and, and so that you can create these various tensions mm -hmm. and colors, right? But yeah. like you say, there, there's guys doing the, like McKeith and McCoy and uh, well, Schoenberg, there's all these other people. Uh, they explored the dimension, they just didn't explore the whole dimension. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah. The, uh, That's me. You telling me, you talking about the game. I still fight my. Uh, my root orientation as a bass player, I still fight that. Right, right. Well, day. see, see, you, you just need to study polytonal harmony mm -hmm. or something like that. I've got a group right. Just say, for example, you play a, a major seven, uh, a, a, C, a, a D major seven mm -hmm. with a C in the bass, mm -hmm. that's going to open up your world. Mm -hmm. Or secondary dominance. Which nobody seems to fucking know about. Which is the easiest shit in the world. <laughs> and they call them, you know, they, they don't teach them right in the school. Like, and all we're talking about is an A over C sharp. Mm -hmm. A D over F sharp. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a third in the bass. Yeah. What you hear mm -hmm. in a lot of Motown music, right? A uh, lot of uh, uh, Holland and Dozier stuff, right? Okay. And so you can go up or down with these chords. You know, a person plays C, D. Whatever you can play, an a, uh, 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 a C, an A over a C sharp, mm -hmm. and a D. Well, that's gonna open up your world because it's chromat. We're talking about chromaticism, right? Mm -hmm. You can call it chromaticism. Call it whatever you want, yeah, because it doesn't matter as long as you know what it is, yeah. right? And so, uh, but once you, you you understand, like I could show you if that piano was on, and then. Uh, it would become very clear to you, mm -hmm. right? Uh, mm -hmm. Make something very uh, uh, complicated become simple and, and clear to you. Well, well hopefully yeah. these people will uh, contact you and, and, and take some lessons and stuff. Yeah. Oh, at the clinic. Now, now um, yeah, or come to the clinic. Cause yes, come to the clinic. Cl you'll learn a lot uh, about the what, what day is that clinic again? Uh, it's Wednesday the uh, 29th. Wednesday the this 29th. Wednesday the 29th of August. This Wednesday the 29th. 7 to 10. 
2019, so if y'all looking at this next year, <laughs> right. it's over. But right. this will Don't be posted. Yeah, right. this will be posted Monday. Now, you'll be able to contact this man. Um, they can contact uh, me through TonyNewtonMusic.com. Right, okay. Now, if you written books, right? Yes, w 15 books. Okay, I don't want you to have to name all no, 15 right. of them. <laughs> all right. But they are music. There's a bass Bible. There is a bass Bible. Right. They are most of them music related. They right? are, uh, yeah, they're, they're personal development and music related. Right. That I think that's awesome. And we keeping the ghetto person just walk right past <laughs> doing a live footage. Right. I just hit the camera. We we don't care, man. Right. We, we, we learning something today. And that's what we do every time we come in here, Pope. Yes, don't sir. Pope has been in here a lot. About ten times. <laughs> He's been, uh, he been here more than ten times. We didn't been doing this show for seven years. He's been uh -huh. in here more than ten times. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, we've done like close to two hundred. Pope uh, had to uh, be right, at least a hundred right. of them. Uh, 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 so I didn't count. Yeah, we we don't count. But but we enjoy when the legends come. Yeah. Now. They we can contact you at uh, uh, uh my Facebook uh, page. You got a Facebook page. Yeah. What's the name of the Facebook page? Tony Newton Music Artist. All right, you, and Tony Newton TNT Extreme. Yeah, you can uh, holler at this man. Uh, Thomas, you got any questions? I mean, Tomas, you got any questions? <coughs> well, I, I have a clarifying question. So basically, your harmony system can be used with over major or minor keys because you're omitting the thirds, is that correct? Well, uh, uh, think of it as you're adding to your harmonic vocabulary. Okay. Right, you don't want to think of it in the context of tertian harmony, right? Mm -hmm. you, you can mix the two once you get them together, right? But initially you only want to stay in one or the other. Okay. Then you can, because you don't want to be thinking like that. All right. <laughs> right. You know, you know, because it's not the same thing, right? Okay. Uh, once I, I can show you on piano, then that would become clear what I'm talking about, right? Uh, it's 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 the same kind of foundation, like we, uh, but there ain't no major and minor, right? right? There's, but well, there first. is augmented and diminished, okay? Right. So all of the fifths can be flattened or sharpened. Mm -hmm. But there's no thirds in right. there to become major or minor, or no sevenths, same shit. Right. right. And so, um, once you see it and you hear it, then you understand. It's just like you playing a power chord, right? Right. A, a, a octave, fifth, and an octave, right? And neither major. And so, minor. like you can play. I have a tuning. If it's tuned in, uh, I have a tuning for a guitar that's all fifths, and you can play anything that I can play on piano six. Fifths, right? You can you can play them on guitar. It's right. tremendous. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does y'all does y'all understand that, folks? If you didn't, uh, you need to take some lessons. <laughs> you you need to come and check it out because that that is very interesting. The more you know, it's it's like. It's like your eyes open up, the light bulb is on. It's like okay, I, I, I get it. Right. It's a few people that get it, and, and some of us that don't get it, and some of us don't want to get it. But but uh, some don't get it till later. <laughs> no, right. So <laughs> the, the light that, the light came on for me late in life. Right. Yeah. Right. right. And so, but I kept going yeah. until it did. Yeah. Right. <laughs> some, some things you have to actually yeah. set on the shelf. Yes. Yeah, because exactly. you're not there. Right. You, right. You're it's not too much. Right. It's almost right. like a little kid and you trying to tell him. Here's how a car works. Right, they don't right, even know right, how to walk. Right. right. It's so, like a seed. Sometimes you plant the seed and you have to wait till it blossoms, yeah, right? Yeah. Till it comes into a flower. Like you say, you have to sit on it for a while and yeah. think, oh, yeah, okay, now I understand it. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's just like a woman. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. Hey, boy. That's another world. Yeah, that's another world. <laughs> Okay, so uh, look, man, we ain't really want to keep you, man, even though we have <coughs> kept you Vital for... information. Right, right. For there is one other thing that I wanted to uh, <laughs> talk to you about. Cause you're, the third, you're the third guy that I've come across with Detroit bass players that went from doing the Motown stuff to doing the extreme, the challenging... Yeah, fusing, right, right. fusing stuff. And that had to be a transition. The first one was rail. Yeah, right, right. And then... 
Michael. Then, then there was Michael. Yeah, right. And I had the pleasure of working with Michael. I think Ralph was responsible for it. Yeah, right. Me that gig with, uh -huh, with right, Miles. And then I get with you, and I'm like, how crazy was it for you to go from playing the structured stuff from Motown to having well, all I'm, the gloves taken I, off? I'm going to make it easy for you. You know what I'm saying? You just let loose. loose. <laughs> you just <laughs> right. let loose. You just let loose. Right? And that's mm -hmm. really all it is, mm -hmm. right? Because, I mean, you've, you've had all that foundational mm -hmm. shit, right? So you know what that is. Yeah. But now you can it, express yourself creatively on whatever level you yeah. want. Yes, sir, and right. that's what the fusion level allows you yeah. to do, right? And you just, as long as you keep it musical, it's right. going to work. Right. The problem is with a lot of guys. See, that's why fusion. No, they, they be around. playing notes. They be they, noodling. They, yeah, they, they, no, they, they no, stand around. No. And if you don't really know structure, you're not going to be. No, no, you're no. Not be it ain't going to be an effective fusion. Uh, no, no. Uh, it's no. A, and that's I, why I hear died. tons of fusion. And now it's, it's, a, fusion. it's a bad word now. <laughs> right, right, right. It's right. a bad word. Right. It's unfortunate, too. The only the task at the top of the feed chain were ever to make it their shit understood. Like that's what I want to say. Right in the middle of that. It's like compositional form, don't go away. The theme and development does not go away. That's why mm -hmm. Red Laird or Snake All or any of these mm -hmm. pieces are timeless. Because you got melody and form. And yes. right. Not That's a bunch of shit that you can't understand. Right. And you know, it's and you got creativity so in there too. Really, 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 right, and you yeah. got creativity uh, really within that. Uh, yeah. Joe Swerf, because he was the first guy that had these really, really yeah. obs yeah. obscure chords, but yeah, they're understandable, right. and he could do a melody inside right. these chord right. structures. Inside those and I said, man, right. listen right. to this right. dude. Amazing. Who else are you going to play like yeah, this? Right. And right. you had to play with this guy? Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, how what was it? Main, mainly, uh, what holes were is he bought the violin technique yeah. to the okay, guitar, yeah. right? right? Because he I played the bow, and yeah. that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's how he can play. Did. Right. Did. That's how he can play more notes on okay. one string oh, because right. you're playing the bow, right? Uh, right? Okay. And so that's th and if you listen to his first CTI album, he's playing both instruments. Right. It's obvious, mm -hmm. right? right? And so uh, now his harmonic thinking—that's another different, another thing, right? I mean, yeah. he studied Coltrane and things like that. Mm -hmm. And that's how he comes up with these different harmonies. And he can play inside the box or outside mm -hmm. the box, totally. right? It's just like on snake oil. You know, and Holdsworth don't play no rhythm, right? <laughs> the only one of the only guitar yeah. players I play with that don't play no rhythm, but he'll come up with something yeah, that'll right, still right, be right. musical he, he and it'll work. Real nice. and, and it'll yeah. work, right? Exactly. And so uh, the man is, was amazing. Amen. Like I said, Fred, Fred still scared Fred, me to, yeah, to right, death. That right, solo. Right. I, got, I got all the chords. Right, right. That solo? No. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about oh. <laughs> It's the same plan. Right. Right, mm -hmm. and so that's still the raking, but now you got you got string rocking within you got both of them. Mm -hmm. Right, and right, so right. Um, all these techniques you can use them just like baby love was. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. Without the, the, the right, right, yeah, exactly. Right, right. Without that, it's right. It ain't the same right, thing, the same right? Thing. right? Totally exactly. Different. Just that one little thing, yeah. right? And that would make all the difference yeah. in the world, right? Tony, did you ever get a chance in your in your travels to ever play with Jimmy? I was supposed to play with Jimmy before he died. Wow. I had Marvin Marshall was a friend of wow. mine who knew him and was hooking us up. <laughs> you know, the next thing I know, you know, he's gone, he's gone right? Right, right? But right. I was next in line to start playing with him, right? Wow. And that would have been, because I could have lit him up. That would have been <laughs> sick. <laughs> you, Tony, you, Tony Williams, and Jimmy? Right, right, right. Oh, that right. would have been right. insane. Right, yeah. Right. 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 Could have lit him up, right? And yeah, so. well, Jimmy and Miles had been planning on something before he did. Yeah, right, right, right. Exactly, right. exactly. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And Gail Evans, too. Gil Evans, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. some orchestra, orchestra, um, right. yep. yeah, yep. Yep. Just gonna and play Gil, man, up. Gil makes strings sound like yeah, nobody right, else right, I ever right, heard. Right, right. Uh, I still, I still, I still don't. Uh, 
Don't know what magic he had, but he, the horns too. Uh -huh. He could make them sound like no. Oh yeah, else, right, man. right. Voicings, right. That's it's, a, it's it. a skill to voicing that stuff, yeah. orchestrational wise. And everybody right. was talking about the, the, the black sound. He said, "But you know, Miles Davis, I said, man, you know." No. <laughs> the, 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 the most recognizable architect in Miles Davis sound came from a white dude. Right, right, mm. right, right. Okay, right. You right. just didn't read about him. Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But shit, if it wasn't for him, uh -huh. and uh, what's my man? A play piano for him. Um, play. I don't Bill know where I'm cutting Bill this section Bill out, Bill man. Bill 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 Right. So well, it took me a long time to figure that out because I was in that uh -huh. I was in that one right. eighth and everything. And yeah. On right. top of that was just on top of that. I'm still looking at the uh -huh. one to the eighth. Right. You know, I still got that problem, man. You know, well, I like that. I said, I can show you because you can see it on the piano, right? And then oh, it's like oh, okay, it's much yeah. easier to see on the yeah. piano mm -hmm. than it is on a string instrument, right? right. It's, it's impossible on a string instrument. Right. Okay. Well, look. Uh, they are making this impossible for me to edit. <laughs> <laughs> now we, we pushing it. I want to be finished with this tomorrow after right, church. Right, right, right. So look. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, look, the conversation could go on. Right. Just not the, the tape. Or we got <laughs> folks got short attention spans out there. You know what I mean? So look, man. Like I said, I, we ain't want to keep you, which we have been doing, y'all. Y'all just can't see that chain around his ankle that we got. <laughs> Look, I appreciate you for coming. I appreciate y'all for coming. That's the truth, baby. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. Uh, and my crib, and my crib, man. Right. <laughs> Normally, uh, we let everybody know that we have in the basement. But um, uh, and invite people down, but for some strange reason we didn't this time. So I apologize for those who uh, I didn't notify who would have loved to have been here. I, yeah, I apologize right. to all of y'all. Um, don't kill me. <laughs> but uh, is there anything that you'd like to say in closing before you play us out? Um. I, all I can say is follow your dream, follow your dream, and uh, because if you don't follow your dream, you're gonna regret it though, your whole life, and you won't be living, you know, what you were meant to do. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's that's just like I wrote the song, follow your heart, <laughs> follow your dream, mm -hmm. and and do the be the best you can be in everything that you do. That's the key. Because if you're not the best, if you're not giving it your best, you're not going to evolve and grow. And growth is, is the key. Right. Uh, he should know because he's been doing this for a mighty long time. <laughs> right. <laughs> and doing it good. Doing it well. Definitely. No doing problem. it sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Newton, a Detroit based legend. That's all it takes, folks. That's all it takes.